Now let us look at the challenges for IPRS. 15 years ago, a society like IPRS would have to, I would say at least societies abroad, big societies, would have to process about 120 to 180 million transactions. Now what is a transaction? It means that every album that is sold, that's a transaction. Every time a song is played on radio, that is a transaction, because some money has to be paid for the lyricist and the composers. In 2015, to give you an example, a society like PRS, and it's, the same is going to happen for IPRS, Society like PRS processed 300 billion transactions. 2015. In 2016, they processed 600 billion transactions. All right. And this is going to grow exponentially. Every time someone on his mobile listens to a song, that is a transaction. Now, when the, these companies, they report to the society, the reporting is nine digits, uses nine digits after the unit. It's fractions, fractions of pesa. But when you multiply by billions, it's a lot of money. So we have to process. If we don't process, we don't get the money. Okay, now what does it mean, processing? Well, let's take uh, an ordinary song. There is a lyricist and a composer and a music publisher. So the music publisher gets 50%, the lyricist gets 25%, and the composer gets 25%. So if a transaction comes in, which is... Uh, Rupees zero zero one seven three nine five two. You divide into hundred, multiply by fifty, multiply by twenty five, multiply by twenty five, and you have the result. But let us take another case. You have a song by Shankar Sun Lai. All right. So you have the publisher who has fifty percent. Lyricist will have 25%, and the composers, Shankar Mahadevan, uh, Loy Mendanza, Esan Nurani, each one will have 16.66%, one will have 16.67%, to make 100%. So these fractions of pesos you have to divide into 16.66%, 60. you can see the problem. All right. Now, you have, let's take rap songs abroad. Let's take the song Don't Funk With My Heart. Don't Funk With My Heart has samples uh, included, uh, including uh, one Indian music sample. There are 24 copyright owners in that song. There is one who has 1.78%. Now, if I am the publisher in India of that composer, he expects me that this 1.78% from the exploitation of Don't Funk With My Heart in India, you, you collect it and pay me. It may be only $3,000. It's $3,000. And multiply by many markets around the world, it's big money. So you can see the complexity. So for that, and let me add, there is another complexity. Is that the IPRS will register, will process according to the way the songs are registered in its database. Now, some songs were registered long ago. 
maybe the person, let's say she's a woman, she registers the songs when she was unmarried, then she got married, so she registers under the new name. So you have some songs in, under one name, some songs under another name. You have then composers, the Ilya Raja, he has changed several times his name in his career. Ilya Raja, Ilya Raja. So the record label, he will, they, will re, they will register the, his songs according to the name he has when they signed the contract with him. So you have databases that are really out of order and need to be cleaned. And when you go abroad and you look, for example, you have all heard of the recent controversy between Ile Raja. Uh, so I wrote, the Hindu asked me to write an article at that time. So I went into the databases of several societies and I found that, for example, Ile Raja in France, there are only uh, two of his songs registered. Uh, in Germany, none. In England, not even a hundred. Why? Because this concept of copyright, royalty flow, was just not there. In, until a few years ago, for the record label, I copyright yeah, Mira Mal. It was one. I buy a bag of potatoes and it is mine. And all is mine. And I register it with IPRS. But then the music gets exploited outside. In the US, in Barbados, in Mexico, in Brazil, in Russia. These societies have never got the database of the Indian works. So they will collect money and they will check, is this song in our database? No. So they put it in a suspense account and keep it for three years, five years, some, depending on the rules of the society. Some societies keep it up to seven years. But if after this time nobody has claimed the money, they use this money for the development of local songwriters. Help them for their first album, for festivals, etc. So global registration of Indian works is very important. So we right now in IPRS, what we are doing is that we are creating ensuring that we have an authoritative database. Now, people can blame whatever uh, the past. The point is, we did not have the tools in the past to have an authoritative database. Because what is an authoritative database? People thought that you just register correctly in IPRS. And then that's the authoritative database and you will get the money. But what happened when the FM radios came on the scene? They will send us their logs. Song, I love you tonight. Who is the singer? Who is the com? No, they don't. Just how can you process? There are 50 songs, I love you tonight. Which one is it? They, couldn't able, they were not able to tell us. So there, they would play the music, but don't have their a proper database. And this is true to this day. Most of those who use the music, they take the copyright information from various sources who may not be authoritative. If uh, let's say Apple Music takes the database from the US, well, Ili Raja will have only 100 songs. So all the other songs, when they get played, he will not see the money. And his publisher will not see the money. And his lyricist will not see the money. So we are really uh, 
it's a global problem which we are trying to address and beginning to address. There used to be uh, a, a, a uh, in 2010 onwards a, a movement to create a global repertoire database. For some reason, for after four years spending many millions of pounds, uh, it failed. And so, in IPRS, the path that uh, we are taking is the following. How can we create an authoritative Indian database? When the data that we get from the users is itself faulty or incomplete, how can we really accurately collect and distribute the money? Well, to make an authoritative database, you need three things. You have to triangulate. You need to know exactly who are the lyricists and the composers and the publisher. You need to know who is the record label. And you need to have a sound recording which you audio fingerprint and you link through blockchain to the, the, to the copyright information for the publishing and for the sound recording. Once you triangulate this, then even if radio doesn't have the copyright information, they should give us access to their sound recording database. We will just find out by matching them through our audio fingerprint. Oh, this is the sound recording. Okay, all right, don't tell us. We know. We have the information. This is a massive job. It is very expensive, but it has to be done. 